California. We put aside our differences about uh, if the square bird or the little bird is the best, and we host this show for everything from the first bird ever built right on down to the present model years. Fabulous. Now, these are uh, mostly Southern California cars, or where do people come from for this show? Well, it is held right here in sunny Southern California, and we have cars all the way from north to Simi Valley and, and as far south as San Diego, and perhaps there may be some participants from Arizona and Nevada here as well. Now, is it a judge show? Absolutely, but uh, this is not concourse judging. We judge on fit and finish and the love that the, that the owners put into their cars. Yeah, well, and I've seen, you know, I've seen everything, including some works in progress. Absolutely. We have uh, both uh, concourse winners right on down to rolling frames, daily drivers, and works in progress. I love the colors here, too. I mean, it's so vibrant, and some of the wild Thunderbird colors. Little birds are beautiful, but there's some big birds that I just I could die for. Let's, let's go check a couple out. Check it out. All right. The Pageant of the Thunderbird is a celebration of perhaps one of the most memorable cars in automotive history. This event, held in a beautiful park setting, had classy birds from 1955 to 2002, and even a few customs on hand. These T-Bird owners couldn't settle for ordinary license plates either. Oh no! With so many beautiful birds in attendance, I hardly knew where to start. Leo, this has got to be one of the most beautiful 60s I've ever seen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dennis. I certainly appreciate the compliment. Did you build it? Yes, yes. It was a labor of love. I in this. And, it, and was it close to the one your mom had? It's very close. This particular car has unique power windows on the front doors only with cranks on the quarters. Well, let's, let's look under the hood. Now, this would have been a 389 engine. Yes, a 389 was Pontiac's only displacement choice because they were only making large cars in 1960. So you could only get a 389, but you, yeah, there right. were different 389 variations, right? Right. There were six variations of the 389 from a high economy two barrel to a very high performance tri-power setup with a 10 and three quarter to one compression. This is the standard Bonneville engine, which is 303 horse and 10 and a quarter compression with a four barrel. A very good workhorse engine. Well, you know, it's a, it's a big engine, but there's still a lot of room in there. Yes, a uh, uh, man can work on it. <laughs> Absolutely, you can almost stand Get in it. Get at everything, yes, <laughs> crawl in, go to work. And, and beautifully restored. Now, you know, when you, when you got the car, was the engine intact or? The engine compartment was untouched. Uh, Maxine said her husband never would open the hood on it, and it looked like it, but every last detail was exactly the way it left the factory, and it just needed to be well restored. Well, actually, that's a good thing. I mean, you, A very good thing. You didn't yes. have to put anything back after somebody had done something wrong. Right. Every last piece in the engine compartment was factory original. Wow. And what a unique front end. It flows with the balance of the, the entire design of the car perfectly. Oh, it, it is beautiful. And that was... One year only. That was the last time they did that. First and last, basically. Right. Wow. Well, you know, you cruised a lot in Mom's car, and, and, I, and I know you don't drive a lot of your cars very much, but what do you say we... Oh, we're going cruising. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's button it up. Welcome back to My Classic Car as we go cruising in a 1960 Pontiac Bonneville Sport Coupe. Well, now, 60 was a pretty big year for Pontiac. Well, they made, I think, on the tall side of 350,000 cars. And I was astounded when you told me how, how few of these seemed to be left of the 60s. Well, there was a significant group in the Pontiac Owners Club that made a real hard attempt to document how many 60 Pontiacs of any body style remained in a five-year period, just barely exceeded 300. And so there's something more than 300 remaining, but probably not many. Bondiac had huge success on racing in 1960. They, they won the majority of the NASCAR races. They did as close to a clean sweep of domination that year as 
I think any vehicle ever has in history. And so what do you think the reason for so few of them still being around? Did they just meet their fate with the crusher? Yes, I'm, I'm very sure that the gas supply crunch of the 70s, the cars were already used cars 10 and 15 years old, and they just heavily, I'm afraid, were discarded. Some of the very latest 60 models were available with a factory four speed. Very few were made. Truly a rare option. And in 60, the right people could obtain super duty parts. Being the true gentleman that he is, Jim offered to let me drive this baby. And what a ride it was. So. Jim, what a beautiful car. Thanks for letting me drive it. Oh, it's been fun. Well, and thanks, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking down and smiling. Oh, and so am I. Mind if I drive it back to the barn? Oh, do. All right, here we go.